So last time we were talking about uh, mechanisms for how overpressure can develop in a reservoir. And we talk, spent a little bit of time talking about this disequilibrium compaction. So that's just one mechanism. Uh, and so today we're going to talk about a few more mechanisms uh, that, that can generate overpressure in, in a reservoir. And so <coughs> tectonic compaction is sort of in one way closely related to disequilibrium compaction. But if, you, if you'd imagine that you have um, a reservoir that's been isolated due to faulting. So you had a, the you know before this fault occurred, which you know wasn't instantaneous, but these can occur over relatively short geologic times. Over uh, you know you can have isolation and faulting over a few thousand or hundred thousand years, which is relatively short in geologic time. And so then you have this reservoir that's isolated, and then you have tectonic motion that follows that, right? So you, you have, uh, you know, basically the forces of any type of uh, tectonic motion or additional sedimentation um, that can then cause or, you know, can essentially squeeze that reservoir and increase the pressure of the fluid that was in there, okay? And so the idea here is that it's, it's sort of the same concept as disequilibrium compaction in that these tectonic trends, these, you know, th these tectonic events, either the faulting or the subsequent compression, or uh, we're not, we're really focusing on overpressure here, but the same could be said, it, it could relax, right? It could, the tectonic motion could relax the reservoir and cause the reservoir pressure to drop. Um, but here we're sort of confining the discussion to overpressure. So, uh, you know, the idea would be that these tectonic events occur faster then the fluid can equilibrate, right? So, you know, the fluid uh, would try to, be, try to migrate up through the seal, but that occurs due to the same, type of th the same type of things we talked about before with respect to the time constants of fluid diffusion. That occurs much slower in the tectonic events, and then that can lead to overpressure in the reservoir. Um, another one is just uh, uh, hydrocarbon column height. So we all know that the hydrocarbons are more buoyant than water. And so if you have, uh, you know, if you have a um, two or three phase saturated reservoir, then all your hy hydrocarbons are going to go to the top. And those are going to be at a higher pressure than the hydrostatic pressure of the water uh, in the reservoir. And so you get this sort of high overpressure region in the in the tops of the reservoirs, and this can be seen, you know, if you actually measure pore pressure, um, so these so the the dashed lines here represent a hydrostatic pressure gradient, and you see at the tops of the reservoirs here at the tops of these reservoirs. So these are the different dots. Uh, the different dots represent different reservoirs. But they all have this sort of characteristic feature that at the at the tops of the reservoir, you have this kick to the right in the data, and so that you know this kick to the right represents that the, the, the pore pressure is slightly higher at the top of the reservoir, higher than remember remember the definition of overpressure is just higher than hydrostatic, right? So these kicks to the right represent a pressure higher than hydrostatic in the, in those regions. So centroid effects, I, I sort of feel a little weird about including this in terms of overpressure because the pressure in, in the sand in this case is not really above hydrostatic. It's just everything else around it is near lithostatic. And so this would be the case in, if you had an isolated, completely sealed 
it's a column of sand that's completely inside a shale. And there's some tilt to it. So in the shale, of course, you're going to have, um, in, in the shale, you're going to have sort of a, a near lithostatic. So remember, lithostatic pressure is basically where the pore pressure increases at the same as S vertical or the overburden pressure, right? So in a shale, you can, you know, we never get exactly lithostatic, but it can be really close, right? It can be that lambda fa factor can be 0.95, right? And so in a shale, you, you have really, um, you know, you have an increasing with the overburden pressure, and then in the uh, in the sand, which is going to be well connected, so the pressure there is going to increase with hydrostatic. And so if you actually drew a line of the actual the two, where they meet would be called the centroid. So this would be the pressure in the sand, I'm sorry, the pressure in the shale. This would be the pressure in the sand. Where they meet is called the centroid. And so in the sand region, anything above the centroid, right, so anything above this is going to be at a pressure m much higher than what's around it. Okay? So it's not necessarily an overpressure in the sense that it's not above hydrostatic. It, it is hydrostatic. It's just what's around it is lithostatic. Right? And so the, the reason this is really important is in drilling, of course, right? Because you're drilling along in shale at, at lithostatic pressure, and if you drill right into the top of this, you're going to get a kick. Right? So you're going to get a really instantaneous jump into pore pressure. And so that can be really important. And if you can't, you know, if you're in pressure managed drilling scenario, if you can't control the uh, the mud weight or change the mud weight quick enough, you know, eventually that can lead to a blowout. Of course, you've all had drilling, right? So there are other mechanisms. Uh, Aquathermal pressurization. By the way, we're in chapter two right now, so this is chapter two of the book. And if you want to read more details, you know, more descriptive details, there are a couple of paragraphs on all of these uh, that I mentioned. But so, um, aquathermal pressurization. This is simply, you know, there's radioactive material in the earth and it's decaying, which generates heat. Uh, there's also a diffusion from the mantle, so heat diffusion through the through the surface, uh, you know, through the rock, upwards from the mantle. And of course, what happens to a fluid when you heat it up? Well, it expands, right? And if it's in a confined vessel, then it causes the pressure to rise, right? And that's sort of, you know, here we have a fluid in a pore. A confined vessel, we're heating it up, causes it to expand, which would cause the pressure to build up. Um, so this, while this does and, and you know conceivably could be an explanation for higher pore pressures, it's really like a second order effect because if you look at just sort of the time scales that it takes, you know, particularly for the heat diffusion from the mantle, uh, the time scale, f you know, diffusion is a very slow process. Right? So the, the, the time scale that it would take for the heat to actually appreciably heat up the fluid enough to cause expansion, to cause a notab noticeable pressure change, um, it's, it's, it's long even compared to geologic time. So that, you know, basically it would imply that you'd have a perfect seal. Your reservoir had to be perfectly isolated for millions of years f for there to be appreciable effects of this. And that's just typically not not common um, scenario. Um, and, and the other one is also sort of a second order effect uh, because it's also a slow process, but you know, the, 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 hydro, the hydrocarbon generation. So, I mean, there are certain reservoirs that are still, of course, generating new hydrocarbons due to thermal matru maturation, right? So, uh, I think this is, can be explained for some overpressure scenarios and like off the coast of Norway, the temperature is just right there where there's still, you know, thermal maturation occurred, and so you're, you're getting new hydrocarbons and there's some overpressure. 
uh, but it's, it's also sort of a second order effect because they're, they're disequilibrium and compaction and other things happening at the same time. So it's hard to delineate exactly how much of the overpressure is caused by what. But it's a, it's a, it can happen. It's a small effect.